Hi, this is Arson Cash Cashian, head buyer at the, here at the Boulder Bookstore. And today on Inside the Boulder Bookstore, I'm here with the author James Elroy. And I'm sure if you haven't, the name doesn't quite ring a bell, even though it should. I'm sure you know LA Confidential. He's written books like American Tabloid. Great, great crime writer focusing on LA. So, uh, James, you've written about LA pretty much your whole life. And you were. No, no my. Underworld USA Trilogy books, my big political novels, American Tablet, The Cold 6000, and Bloods of Rover are set almost entirely outside of L.A. Okay. So I have left L.A. fictionally in the books. Well, you're back now, right? Widespread Panic mm -hmm. is back. Widespread in? Panic is L.A. set, and I am in the process of turning the second L.A. quartet which begins with Perfidia and the Storm, two giant novels set in L.A. in the early days of World War II. I'm turning it into a quintet. What, what is it about kind of that historic L.A. that captures your imagination, that gets you to go back to it or write these big books or the quartets? What about it really has stuck with you as the thing you want to write about? I'm from there. And if I were born and raised in Boulder, Denver, I would have written the Boulder Quartet or the Denver Quartet. It is my earliest memory. I can only say that my parents hatched me in a cool locale at the height of the film noir era, 1948. And I remain insurmountably curious about L.A. Not that I'll discover something I don't know or haven't heard of, but that I'll initiate a process of discovery and resultantly write yet another you haven't lived there in a long time, no, so, so you don't feel a need to be there no. physically. So, how did you end up in Denver? I, you know, I, I was always, I've been surprised when, when I first found out that you were here. That kind of surprised me. But I, so, how 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 did you come to be in Denver, and what do you think of the city of Denver? I like the city of Denver. I got here too because I got back with Helen Canode, my second ex-wife. She said, hey fool, I moved twice for you, you better move once for me. So I did it, and I'm happy that I did it. Yeah. I've never learned my way around Denver. I find the, the grids confusing. Well, it has that offset grid, sort of, right? Yes. It's a grid, and then there's a grid at a diagonal. <laughs> yes, yes, there are too many diagonal streets. Huh? And there are oddly marked streets and avenues, all numbered. But I know how to get to various places. Mm -hmm. So you were, you were born in 1948, Hollywood. What, what is your relationship to movies? Talk about maybe when you were growing up, what was really important to you, and you know, what do you look for in a movie now, your, your books that have inspired movies, things like that. Is there... The books that have inspired movies are nothing more than money. All of them suck chihuahua dicks. None of them are worth the shit. That's the Black Dahlia, that's LA Confidential, I don't care how many awards it won. And the other lesser acclaimed movies, they all bite the big brajol, but they give you a lot of dough and you've already <laughs> done the work. So you're making money for work you've already done. So. That's my relationship to the movies. I like movies. I like hamburgers. If I could never watch another movie, I'd be okay. If I could never eat another hamburger, I'd be okay. <laughs> Was there a particular movie as a, as a kid that you really enjoyed? Is, is there anything that has a, influenced your aesthetic as a writer no. from the movies at all? No. no. What, what has influenced you? You have a very distinctive style. Um, you've talked about outlining your books, like what has really influenced you as a writer or is this something that are you really kind of self-taught in that sense? Just other books. 
the books that moved me, that jazzed me. The American popular novel, I can give you an example, the, the big splashy novels of Harold Robbins and Irving Wallace from the early 60s, The Carpetbaggers, The Inheritors, The Adventurers, Irving Wallace's books, The Fan Club, and The Chapman Report, and so my new novel, set in 1962, the era, the epicenter of the American male-derived pop novel is set in 1962, and it's called The Enchanters. And that comes out in September? Yeah. We're going to look forward to that. Yeah, you saw a shitload of copies. <laughs> and I'll come out here, too. All right. So, so, tell, so you... you You've kind of, uh, you, you, you're not kind of, you don't really use computers, you don't mm -hmm. have a cell phone, I had to call you on a landline. Yeah. Tell me about that and, and why, what has that given you and are we all on the wrong path who are using computers and, and cell phones every day? Computers are evil, they've taken the soul of the world. It's They've created a, you know, a horrible level of anxiety in human beings, and I've absented myself from it. Mm -hmm. I saw it as being bad going in, and I stepped aside. I held off as long as possible. Yeah. <laughs> then, then my wife made me get one when we had a kid. She's like, I have to be able to reach you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That was, well, that, was kind of, just, that was the end of it for get, me. Get the kid a cell phone. Huh? <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah. So, so you uh, on your answering machine though? You you I think you said uh, you've reached the death dog. Right. So yeah. you have a kind of a persona or kind of a uh, uh, you know when you you're kind of famous for this at, at readings when you have a, a kind of an intro or beginning to your readings. Uh, uh, stuff that you say or you know how how did that develop how you know or is that just always been there or did that kind of evolve with your writing kind of how you present yourself in public i love to present myself forcefully forcefully uh, i'm a fabulous reader of my own books there's a gigantic 20-hour podcast of american tabloid which will be on audible come uh, come late this summer, I read the entirety of the text, unexpurgated, unabridged, uncensored. If you are offended by language, stay away. And then name actors read the dialogue. So, yeah, I got a big personality. I, I know now why God made me a bass baritone. And, as far as the demon dog persona goes, I love dogs. You like dogs? Yeah, what kind of dogs do you like? Pit bulls, bull terriers, hound dogs. I love hound dogs. I crave hound dog love. I saw a hound dog puppy at the pharmacy yesterday. I was, I was giving him human love. And he was giving me hound dog love. <laughs> we were banging together too. <laughs> That's great. You don't have a dog book in you, do you? No. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thank you for being here at the Boulder Sir. Bookstore. We appreciate you coming. And we're looking forward to the new book in September. Yeah. All right. And we'll Call see you Abby Endler at Kanoff. You know, when when September rolls around, I'll come up here. All right, we'll tell her to. We'll have a book. Of, we'll have a book event. That'd be great. You're right in Denver. You're close by. I'm close by. All right. Thank you very much for watching. And if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please do so. You'll get more interviews. Not quite like this, but you'll get more wow. interviews. Wow! Hound dog love.